Hi, I'm Scott Pilkington. I'm a retired Chief Warrant Officer with an armament background, and I run Pilkington Competition, where we specialize in match air rifles. I'm Buck Parson, and I work as a gunsmith at many of the JROTC championships nationwide. We're going to walk you through some safe filling and operational procedures for the DAISY 887 air rifle that uses carbon dioxide, or CO2, as a propellant. The DAISY 887 and its older brother, the 888, are one of the best contenders in the sporter air rifle category, winning many regional and national titles since their introduction in 2000. Because this rifle uses CO2 in a small removable cylinder, you will need to keep at your air gun range a bulk CO2 tank to fill the DAISY cylinder. You can buy or rent a CO2 tank from several sources locally. A fire extinguisher or a welding supply shop are good places to get CO2. In bigger cities, a large gas supplier will have it, and you can look in your yellow pages under gas, industrial, or the internet to find a local source where you can get your tanks filled. You need to know about the various sizes of bulk CO2 tanks available. There are three types of CO2 tanks that can be used. They are named by the weight amount of CO2 that they can hold. There are a 10 pound bottle, a 20 pound bottle, and a 50 pound bottle. Now, don't be fooled by the names of these. Just because it is called a 20 pound bottle or a 50 pound tank, that does not mean that is what they weigh. A 50 pound tank weighs over 200 pounds full, so be careful when handling these. You will also notice that there is a chain on the wall to hold the tank securely. This is a mandatory safety requirement to be sure it does not fall over. Believe me, you do not want this on your toes. Be sure that you install a safety strap or chain to a solid wall or post before you attempt to use the bulk tank. Only remove the safety cap over the valve after the tank is securely attached. While on the subject of safety, use of CO2 has its own inherent dangers. Always use eye protection when working with compressed gases. Venting of a gas can accelerate dirt or debris to a high velocity. Keep all persons without eye protection out of the immediate filling area. CO2 also creates extremely cold temperatures. Gloves should be worn to protect your skin from frostbite. Temperatures as low as 70 degrees below zero are possible when bleeding a CO2 tank. Immediate and destructive freezing of exposed skin is possible. CO2 filling should also be done in an area with adequate ventilation. The next thing you need to know about is the dip tube or siphon tube. Because you need to fill the daisy cylinder with liquid CO2, it is necessary that liquid, not gas, comes out of the valve. The liquid is on the bottom of the tank, while the gas is on the top near the valve area. We can solve this problem with the smaller tanks by just turning them upside down so that the liquid CO2 comes straight out of the valve. We obviously can't turn over the 200 pound, 50 pound tank, so when you buy or rent your tank, you need to be sure that it has a siphon tube installed in it. Some 50 pound tanks have this installed already, some do not. This siphon or dip tube reaches all the way down to the bottom of the tank to bring the liquid CO2 up from the bottom. You need to specify that your tank has a dip tube installed and it will normally be stenciled on the side of the tank like this. You can also request to have a dip tube installed on a 20 pound bottle if that's what you have and again it will have a stencil to show this. All tanks use the same threaded fitting on them that is specific to CO2 use only. It is called a CGA 320 in the industry. Now Buck is going to walk you through the filling procedures for your DAISY CO2 cylinder. With your 887 rifles you also receive the DAISY fill station that is designed to fill your DAISY cylinders. Here are the parts of the fill station. The large female connector on the end is the CGA320 fitting that screws onto the bulk tank. Solidly attached to that is the rectangular housing that has a bleed screw that acts as a bleeder valve to purge the braided hose. At the end of the braided hose is a depressor knob connected to a female thread that the DAISY cylinder screws into. The depressor knob is used to open and close the valve in the daisy cylinder. Make sure you have the sealing gasket in place and then screw the large female fitting onto the bulk tank.
Use a crescent wrench to snug up this fitting onto the bulk tank. It does not have to be tight and really tight. Just a good hard snug fit. In most circumstances you will leave this connector fitting attached to the bulk tank until the bulk tank is empty. Next, make sure that the bleeder screw is closed by turning it clockwise. Next, check to make sure that the depressor knob is fully open by turning it counterclockwise. You need to weigh your cylinder empty using a digital scale. It is best if your scale has both grams and ounces. Our sample cylinder weighs empty 432 grams or 15.3 ounces but this will vary from cylinder to cylinder. We suggest that you use a permanent marker to write the exact empty weight on the side of each cylinder. When you're filling your daisy cylinder you have to move the CO2 from the bulk tank as a liquid into the daisy cylinder. To do this effectively the daisy cylinder needs to be significantly colder than the bulk tank which is going to be at room temperature. If you have access to a refrigerator at your school the easiest way to chill cylinders is placing them in the freezer compartment. Buck will walk you through the standard freezer process and then the room temperature process of filling and bleeding the cylinder several times. Now go ahead and put the cylinder into the freezer. That's right your cylinder should be placed in the refrigerator freezer for a good 20 or 30 minutes or until it forms a frost on it. A good cold cylinder will pull that liquid CO2 right into it. Make sure you have your gloves on. Next take the daisy cylinder and screw it into the female threads at the end of the braided hose until it is snug with hand pressure only. Now turn the depressor knob clockwise until it stops which will open the valve inside the daisy cylinder. Now we are ready to start the fill process. Turn the hand wheel on the bulk tank counterclockwise to open it. You will hear the CO2 as it rushes into the daisy cylinder. Leave the valve open until the hissing stops. You will normally see a line of frost disappearing down the cylinder as this is taking place for a few seconds afterwards. If by chance at this point, after you have connected everything up and you see a leak of snow-like particles somewhere at one of the connection points, you need to first close the hand wheel, then snug up the leaking joint just a little bit more. If the leak persists, wait a few minutes until the ice melts and then try to snug up again just a little bit more. When you can no longer hear a rush sound, all the liquid is transferred that is going to. This normally takes 10 to 15 seconds. Close the hand wheel on the bulk tank, then open the depressor knob by turning it counterclockwise, which is closing the valve in the daisy cylinder. Then open the bleed screw on the adapter to bleed the line. Then remove the cylinder and weigh it. It should weigh two and a half ounces. That's 70 grams more than the empty weight. If it weighs more than this total, you will need to screw it back on to the depressor knob end and bleed off a small amount of the CO2 by turning the depressor knob counterclockwise and then reweighing your cylinder. If you put an overfilled cylinder on the rifle, then it can cause your gun to malfunction. You need to weigh each cylinder that you have individually on your scales and write down the empty weight on the side of the cylinder. Some cylinders are known to weigh as much as 432 grams empty, while other cylinders are known to be as light as 403 grams empty. So that's a big spread. You need to know what your cylinder weighs empty so that you do not overfill it. Some coaches recommend just weighing all cylinders to 480 grams and leaving it at that. This still allows for around 200 shots. The cylinder normally uses about one ounce of CO2 for each 100 shots. If you don't have access to a freezer, let's say you are out at a shooting range somewhere and don't have a refrigerator handy. You can use the CO2 itself 
to chill the cylinder. To do this, you will have to fill the cylinder several times and then bleed the cylinder off each time. First, attach the cylinder to the fill station, as we have already demonstrated with the exception that the cylinder is going to be at room temperature just like the bulk tank. Open the bulk tank and you will hear a short rushing sound into the cylinder. Close the bulk tank and open the bleed screw so that the CO2 is draining out of the cylinder, causing the cylinder to chill. This bleeding off of the cylinder will cause the cylinder to chill slightly. Now we repeat the process. Open the bulk tank hand wheel and you will get a slightly longer rushing sound as CO2 enters the cylinder. Then repeating the process of closing the hand wheel and opening the bleed screw. When the CO2 is back bleeding out of the cylinder, you will see a frost line moving down the cylinder. After two or three repetitions of this, it has probably chilled enough to get a proper fill. So you need to remove the cylinder and weigh it. If you're above your empty weight plus 71 grams, then you need to bleed it down to the correct weight. If you're still below the correct filled weight, you will need to repeat this process and bleed the cylinder. When you get ready to install the cylinder on the gun, you should check the o-ring and the amount of lube on the threads and on the o-ring. Being careful not to get any lube forward of the o-ring, they should stay lubed with a silicone grease to prevent the threads from seizing together. Do not use too much grease, a tiny amount is all you need on the threads. When installing the cylinder, you should screw the cylinder until you hear the CO2 rush into the gun. In most cases, a small wrench will be needed to make sure that the cylinder is fully seated, but do not over tighten. After you hear the rush of CO2, you should be able to turn the cylinder three quarters to a full turn until it has hit a hard spot. Stop turning, your cylinder is tight enough. If for some reason you lose the small wrench that Daisy provided with each gun and choose to use something larger like a crescent wrench, then only use two fingers to turn the wrench. Over torquing with a big wrench can cause the cylinder threads to seize into the gun and in extreme cases can cause the gun itself to break. Over tightening of the cylinder can cause the, the cylinder threads get stuck into the housing of the gun. Once you start to remove the cylinder, it's going to break the housing here. At best, you're going to get away with having to replace the whole barreled valve assembly. When you remove the cylinder from the gun, the o-ring will normally turn completely white from CO2 absorbed into the o-ring. The white o-ring will be expanded much larger than normal, and if you try to reinstall the cylinder at this point, you will cut your o-ring and cause the cylinder to leak. You need to set this cylinder with the white o-ring aside for 30 or 40 minutes until it reaches its normal shape and color. Most coaches would recommend that you put the cylinder with the white o-ring in the freezer and just use a previously filled spare. Replacement neoprene o-rings can be purchased at Walmart or any paintball supply store. You should know that while CO2 is a very reliable propellant for air guns, it does have some temperature restrictions. CO2 functions best in temperatures between 60 and 95 degrees. You need to be aware that leaving fully charged cylinders in a closed vehicle on a hot day may cause the CO2 to expand and rupture the burst disc as a safety release. So we have some samples here of a ruptured burst disc and a new burst disc. Uh, for some extra tips, 
when the rifle is not in use, you should leave the cylinder partially installed just to keep debris and dust from gathering inside the valve area of the gun. Um, if you have extra cylinders that are not in use, the cylinder should come with this little handy dust cover to keep debris from getting inside the valve area of the cylinder. If you have a 10 or 20 pound tank that you want to take with you to a match on the road, you need to protect the valve so that it cannot be sheared off. How do you know if your bulk tank is empty? With no attachments on the tank, open the hand wheel and an empty tank will blow gas with very small amount of snow-like particles and a partially filled tank will blow snow-like particles across the room. Some coaches say that even a bulk tank equipped with a dip tube will not completely fill a cylinder once it reaches half empty. If you try to have the tank filled at half full, some gas suppliers may argue that it does not need to be filled. If this is a problem for you, you should be firm and offer to pay the full refill price if necessary. That's about it for the safety operations of your new Daisy 887. We wish you good success with these rifles at your competitions.